okay. It's okay. It's going to be all right. Um, this is a, an eight-part series. This is one of the longer ones here, and I, I felt like it was important to, to, to go ahead and, and just kind of really take our time through this. Um, and it's an eight-part eight series based on the book, uh, Win the Day by Mark Batterson. Mark Batterson is absolutely one of my favorite authors. He's the uh, lead pastor of National Community Church in uh, Washington, D.C., and he started a church there in, a, in an old abandoned theater, and um, God gave him a vision, and uh, I mean, who wants to start a church, plant a church in Washington, D.C.? Anybody? <laughs> right? <laughs> this is an incredible vision. So he's an incredible guy, and uh, now they have several campuses around town there and uh, doing great things for God, but I, I always enjoy his books. This book, Win the Day, is, is an, a really important one, really, uh, for my life, and I thought, gosh, this is really something that uh, I need to share. And so I'll be sharing truths uh, from the Word, uh, as explained by the author, Mark, uh, it, with a little bit of my own flavor, you know, in there. It's just, I, you know, I'm not preaching out of this book, I'm preaching out of the Word of God, okay? Um, but uh, I just want to encourage you, though, that you can really get a head start on things, and um, one of that ways you can do that is to join me or join us on our U, on the YouVersion app, okay? If you've got the YouVersion Bible app, there's a, a plan in there, an eight-day plan that you can uh, go through and, and, and uh, you can uh, follow along, and it has all eight uh, pieces of what we'll be speaking about, we'll be preaching about, and so it's important that you... Uh, that you uh, take a look at that and join me because that'll help you as we uh, as we go through this. Um, I want to read one scripture for you, one that uh, really is uh, one that you should know, and then we're going to pray. It says this in Psalm 118, uh, verse 24, this is the day which the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. But I'd like you to read along with me on this one. I don't usually do that. It's really simple. So let's do that. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I was actually doing King James Version there, wasn't I? It's a habit. So, you know, just from memory. But this is the day which the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. It all has to do with what, we, what he calls in his book and what we're going to be calling over the next uh, several weeks here is to win the day. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much, uh, God, for your presence uh, in and through us this morning. Uh, what a special time we've already had um, in worship and uh, in dedicating children and just uh, enjoying uh, really your presence and, and God, your goodness and faithfulness toward us. So this next uh, uh, time in this service, Father, we give to you. We just give uh, all of this time to you, Father. May every word be, that is spoken be, God, one uh, that is of your heart and of your will. Uh, Lord, that, Father, it would find fertile soil and be planted and would grow and and uh, we watered, uh, Father. So uh, we just thank you for what you're about uh, to speak to our hearts this morning. And I give you all glory and praise for this in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. I want to give you uh, a couple of different... I mean, this scripture here is important, but I want to give you a couple of different ways to look at it. In the NIV, it says, The Lord has done it this very day. Okay? Let us rejoice today and be glad, okay? And then in the common English, it says, this is the day the Lord acted. We will rejoice and celebrate in it. And I think that those are three different ways of looking at that scripture and understanding that when God makes a day, when he says, this is the day that I have made, this is the day that I have completed something on your behalf. This is the day that I've already like compartmentalized for you to exist in, but not just exist, but this is the day that you are to thrive in. In fact, this is the day that you are to win. We got any winners in here? Those of you who are like, I'm not so sure. Let me tell you, the end of the book says you win. You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're a winner. It's not something you hear every day, right? Except when that telemarketing call comes, you could already be a winner. No. <laughs> Win the day because it's already been won. Win the day because it's already been won. All right, let's go to lunch. I'm done. 
Oh, there's more to it. Yeah. This is the day that the Lord has designed for you to be successful in, for you to, to experience blessing in, for you to experience abundant life in. This is the day he has created because he's acted on your behalf. Win the day uh, is, is a theme that, that we're going to kind of uh, just kind of set out for you today as to really what does that mean. And there's, a, there's an old uh, Scottish historian quote. Any Scottish people in here? Yeah, a few, yeah. There's an old quote that says this, and it kind of backs up where that says, Yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, so win the day. And the quote is this. It says, our grand business undoubtedly is not to see what lies dimly at a distance, but to do what clearly lies at hand. It's not to see what is dim and, and is maybe out there in the future, but it is to focus on what is at hand. Now that reminds me of something Jesus said, and Jesus said the kingdom of God is at hand. He said the kingdom of God is within. He said the kingdom of God is near. It's right in front of us. And then he goes on and he says uh, in Matthew 6, he says, above all, seek first or chase after the things that matter. Seek first the kingdom of God and the concerns of life would be taken care of by the Father, the creator of the universe himself. You see, winning the day is a focus of what is at hand in our lives, who we are in Christ, and what we can do to live our lives like they were always meant to be. So the journey that we are setting out on over the next several weeks is really a spiritual and also a practical approach to that age-old term, carp diem. You know that one? Seize the day, right? We're going we're gonna to make that spiritual by pulling up. My, they caught that from the word of God. This is an approach to the day that the Lord has made, the day he took action, and the day that he completed on your behalf. It's a day that will have us rejoicing, a day that will have us being glad, a day that will have us understanding why we're in it to win it. Amen? Are you ready? I don't know. I didn't sound like you're on the bus. That's not the short bus. <laughs> Ephesians 5.16, I don't have it up there, but it says this, make the most of your time because the days are evil. Or redeem the time because the days are evil. And what Mark lays out in his book is that when we live in these daytight compartments, we understand the principle that's up there. Yesterday is history. And we're going to look at what, why it's important to look at yesterday in a certain way. Because uh, how many of you like to reminisce? We just had a family reunion. I'll tell you that 99% of that time was reminiscing. It was. And then 1% was like living in the moment. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't quite that way. But yesterday is history. So there's a proper way to look at yesterday. There's a proper way to look at what yesterday is. And then it says tomorrow is a mystery. That principle of yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Meaning we don't know everything that's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know everything that is in uh, really our future but we know who holds the future, amen? We know that his promises are true. We know his word is true. And because of that, we can stand today in his will and in his favor. See, when we take the 24-7, you know, that's 24 hours, seven days a week, that God has given us and we steward it, we take care of it, we live in it, what we do is we unleash the supernatural of God to work in our lives and to work in that day. Do you know, God always wins, and that's why we always can win the day. You know, there's a, a theme in Scripture uh, that is 
uh, daily. It's about those day-tight compartments. It's about, look, what's at hand is today. Today is the day of salvation, the Bible says. Why does it say that? Why does it say that? Because if you're always looking to the future, which it doesn't exist right now in this time frame and in this in this in this time and space if you're always your your heart and your mind can be doesn't mean we don't look and plan ahead but it can always distract us if we look too much into the past and we remember it the wrong way then it robs us of destiny today so it's important that today being the day of salvation, that at what is at hand, what is right in front of us, is what God is saying to you right now. Somebody is hearing God right now, and this is speaking right to their heart that they can't get caught up in worrying and fearful of the future. They can't get caught up in, in just regretting the past and saying, my past is too... No, God is saying today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of deliverance. Today is the day of restoration. Today is the day when God makes changes and transforms our very being and heart. It's today. It's today. And there's this theme uh, across the scripture. In fact, Jesus says in Matthew 6, 11, give us today our daily bread. It's not weekly bread. It's not yearly bread on Easter and Christmas. In the Lord's Prayer, where this comes from, Jesus prayed past tense. He said, forgive us our debts as we, forgiven, as we forgive our debtors. And then he prayed future tense. He says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And sandwiched right in between there is, Father, give us today. This day, our daily bread. And he made an emphasis in the now. There's many examples of this manna. How many of you know that you could take manna, pick it up from the ground in the Old Testament, and store it in mason jars for later on? It's not what it says. I love mason jars, and Lisa's got a whole cabinet full of them that I don't know what we're going to do with. Oh, Elisha, okay. But manna was a daily thing. When manna came, it fell from heaven as sustenance. It was what? Daily. Because if you tried to keep it, it would grow moldy and stale. It was a daily uh, it was a daily thing. It, it's like, uh, and, and they didn't even know what it was because that's what manna means. What is it? And I could just imagine the kids in the, in the camp, what is it, Papa? What is it, Mama? And then it's just like it's never changed. Just eat it. <laughs> Some things never change. It's daily. You know, when the Bible talks about anger, it says, do not let the sun go down on your anger. Take care of business. Get some reconciliation. Get some, get some uh, forgiveness. Give forgiveness. The Bible says that his mercies are new every year around the time that we celebrate his resurrection. No. It says his mercies are new every morning. Fresh. It's new. It's a daily thing. The Bible says, we already read this, rejoice and be glad daily. You know, creation took place in daytight compartments. Every day of creation, there was an evening and the morning, and that was either the first day, the second day. It was in a daily, in a daily structure. So today, today is a new day, and I'm here to tell you that don't worry about the future. And the past is behind you. Today is a new day. On the way to, to church this morning, I... I was hearing a song uh, from, I think, Hillsong, Young and Free, kind of a cool song. It was just talking about a new thing. God, you're doing a new thing. I just want to be about a new thing. That new thing lives in a daily experience with him. 
Some people, some people, not you, but some people stop living before they ever pass from this life. As they're weighed down by the, 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 the worries of the future or, or the past, which is paralyzing who they are. But God says a different story about all of us. He says that we're a remnant designed and fashioned for living in victory each and every day. What does that mean? It means that if you're hearing this word, if you're hearing my voice, God has chosen you to be a remnant, to be a one who can live an abundant life in him and for him. We're set free from the pain of the past. And we're not shaken or fearful of the future no matter what's going on. Is there a few things happening around the world today? Yeah. There's a few things. But God, we know for a fact, God is working in us his favor, his blessing, his future, and his nature each and every single day day what are we doing with the day that's in front of us well that's what we want to talk about over the next several weeks that there's some habits or really some principles from this book that we want to look at and and during the next several weeks we'll learn about these habits we'll learn about these in a with a spiritual and a practical application and it'll give us the ability really uh, god-given ability that's already in us to uh, stress a little bit less. Anybody sign up for that? Okay, raise your hand if you want to stress less. Okay. Raise your hand if you want to accomplish more. Okay. So I better see you all here next week too. We're going to be, have the, uh, the tools that God has given us in his word to stress less, accomplish more. Here's a side note for you. It doesn't matter where we are in life. It doesn't matter where we find ourselves at this moment in life. There are uh, stressors out there, I know. But we're meant to live in accomplishment of the kingdom of God. We're meant to live in success and prosperity in the kingdom of God. It doesn't mean that we're not going to have trouble. It doesn't mean we're not going to have hard times doesn't mean we're not going to have obstacles. In fact, it means that. It totally means that. So understand that. Understand that. But understand this. We're not meant to just hold on and just wait till someday we die. Not a single one of us is meant to just hold on and wait until we go into that presence of God in eternity. God has designed us and fashioned us to win this day. You know, I'm going to deviate a little bit here. You know, God is raising up his church as a standard of his nature not just in our families, but in a community and in a nation. When are we going to respond to that in such a way with such passion and fervency that we will be aligned with his will and stand for our country and for our communities and for our families? Be praying about that because God is placing us for such a time as this in, in certain ways. And it's all about winning the day, not just so that we can just stress less and accomplish more, but that his very kingdom could be established upon the earth. There's more to it. Get the bigger picture. Get the bigger picture. It's so, so important. So Mark, he, he, he lays out, there's seven icons down there at the bottom. We're going to go through those. Uh, and in the next couple of weeks, we're going to learn how to bury the dead things of yesterday by remembering correctly and seeing what God is doing in a new and fresh way. 
And what I'm believing is that God will, will continue to set us free from our past as we process some of the things that have happened in the past. And as he continues to rewrite or write our story, more important as he writes his story on our lives and our hearts. And in essence, two things will happen over the next couple of weeks. We will flip flip the script. Say that. Flip the script. Say it really fast. <laughs> we will flip the script, and then next week we will kiss the wave. Okay? So I'm not, that's as far as I'm going to go. I'm going to tell you what all those icons mean. But. So this morning I want to talk to you about flip the script. It's the first thing that we're going to lay out today. And, and it says there, if you want to change your life, then change your story. You know, we used to have a thing on the wall here, if you want to change your life, change your mind. Okay? So it's kind of an expansion, really, of that. In fact, the, the, the term uh, change your mind really comes from the term repentance. Did you know that? Repentance is turning 180, that's literally what it means, turning 180 degrees or changing your mind. If you repent on something, it means I decided that I want chicken enchiladas and not a burger <laughs> when you look at the menu. No, I'm just, uh, that's, that's too flippant, really. Repentance is this. It's a change of mind that causes the soul and the spirit to align with God. And many times the soul will have an emotional response that can be tears, it can be remorse, it can be weeping, it can be all kinds of things groaning deep inside. But repentance is simply a change of mind that causes those things. And if you want to change your life Change your mind, but also change your story. What is the story that you tell about yourself? What's the story that you talk to others about yourself? What story are you telling the world with your life? What story is it that's being uh, painted out and displayed for the whole world? Whose story is it? And what does it tell? You know, we've got to live life, but we've got to tell our story with the proper identity that he has given us. Did you know that you have a name? Yeah, my name is Alan. Affectionately, a lot of people called me Aleno. And some of my friends when I was young called me Lala. I am Lala sometimes, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. <laughs> Every one of you has a nickname. I know you do. Someone's called you something. Affectionately, of course. A term of endearment for you. Did you know that God has a unique name for you? Yeah, I know that God has, has, has talked to your parents and they named you and they natured you many times with a very intent of, of like this name is, is, you know, means this or means that. And I think a lot of parents do that. And that's, that's, absolutely, uh, that's absolutely awesome. But God has a unique name for you that only he and you can know. It's awesome. It's awesome. And when you tell the story of your life, when you're telling your story, when, when, you're, when you want to change your life, it comes from the identity of whose you are and the name that he has given you. Understand that. The, the name that he's natured you with. In fact, uh, Revelation chapter 21 says this, or yeah, I should say 21, 20, no, 217, sorry. The one who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Say to the one who overcomes. I will give some of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone and a new name written on the stone, 
which no one knows except the one who receives it. To him who overcomes. Are you hearing what the Spirit is saying? That in life, that in life you will have troubles. In life you will have those times where you have to overcome. And to the one who overcomes, he's given a name. He's given a nature that only he and you will know. This is the nature, the name that we operate out of. This is the story that we're telling. Only you know deep in your heart what he's named you with. You know what a white stone is? A white stone was symbolic of someone who is pardoned in full. They were given a white stone to say, you have been purchased. Your redemption has been given. You are, you are free to go. Uh, you are no longer incarcerated. You are no longer in bondage. This is a sign and a symbol that you're set free. God has given you that uh, that kind of deliverance, that kind of salvation, and he's got a unique name for you written on there, and it's time that you begin to tell your story to the world and to your friends and to your family that he's set you free yes. and that he's natured you and, 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 and he's uh, uh, destined you to become like him and purposed you for something awesome in this life. Not a single one of you woke up this morning and said, you know what, I'm not going to accomplish anything this, today. <laughs> well, to be honest, I've said that. <laughs> not a single one of you have woken up this morning and said, you know what, gosh, I don't know how to do anything. I'm just existing. I'm just going to go back to sleep. Come on, let's be real about it. We don't always tell the good story about ourselves to ourselves. It's time that we understand how treasured he values us, how treasured we are in his eyes, and we begin to tell the story even to ourselves that, God, you are with me. I will honor you. I, I just rejoice in this day. God, I know you're going to accomplish your purpose in my life. Father, I don't know everything that's going to happen today, but I know your favor is upon the hands. Your favor is upon my mind. Your favor is upon my heart. Your favor is upon my feet and everywhere I go, everywhere I walk, everything I set my hands to, it is favored by you. How hard is that? That's the story we've got to tell ourselves every single day. It's time that we start to flip the script of what we're saying. He has promised to those who, who overcome daily revelation, a new name. And when we overcome, we get to tell a story from that new name. You know, the difference in success and failure, the difference in being holy and missing the mark or sinning, the difference in the abundant life and the life of constant struggle, it really comes down to the stories that we tell ourselves and what we tell others about who we are in Christ. If you declare and speak the wrong story, then you're walking out a lie. If you declare and speak what God has written about you, then you are walking in truth. Can we get that? You're not a nobody. You're not at the bottom of the ladder. You're not, uh, you're not a scourge. You're not a, somebody who is, is like, you know, just at the bottom of the barrel. No. You've been named with a new name. His name. Telling your story from this perspective is, is changing your story. It's flipping the script. Numbers chapter 6 says, the Lord bless you and keep you. We know this scripture. The Lord cause his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face to you and give you peace. And then verse 27 says, so they shall invoke or put place or set. I, I added those in. Put place or set, the meaning of the word. They shall invoke, put place or set my name on the sons of Israel. And then I will bless them. 
and then I will bless them. God has nearly 400 names in Scripture. And if he says he's giving you his name, 400 names, that's a lot of different perspectives of what that means. See, when we change our mind and we understand that we're a people of his name, our story begins to change from the old script, that old nature, that old way that has passed away. Changes from the old script of what we used to speak about ourselves that the world sometimes labels us with or puts upon us or the enemy projects on us it begins to flip around when we start to tell our story from what the Word says about us, what He says about us. It begins to flip that around and we begin to have a new meaning and a new purpose and fresh action in this life. So what's in your story? What does it look like? His story in our, in our life always looks like faith and favor. If our life, if your life was a painting, what story would it tell? What would it say? What do we, what picture do we paint daily? Daily, by living in the day, by winning the day. Are we seeing the situation or are we seeing the potential of what God is doing in that situation? Are we seeing the circumstance or are we seeing the God of circumstance above it all, above, able to do above and beyond what we ask or think. He's painting a story, his story, into our life. You know, the Bible says in in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, now faith is the certainty of things hoped for, the proof of things not seen. The substance or proof is within us. Within you today are God-ordained dreams. Within you today are God-ordained ideas, and they're deep within. And they'll spring forth by faith based on what we want to see in our life, and more importantly, based on what we speak our stories to be. You know, I came in this morning, and I said, Bill, I don't know if you know Bill. It's right here in the front row. I said, Bill, how you, how you doing today? You know, he, he's got every right in this life to say, I'm not doing well. Prognosis is not good. But you know what he tells me? He says, I'm doing great. I don't feel anything but well. Bill, I'm here to tell you that inspired me to no end. What it tells me is that you in faith are telling a story and speaking a story for all eternity because it doesn't matter to you exactly what the future will bring. Today, you are his and today he is healing you and today he has given you a new name and you're telling a story about who he is. He is Jehovah. He is Jehovah Rapha, the one that heals you. So inspiring to me this morning. As he walks around telling not a story of circumstance, but of one of who God is in his life. Faith is the certainty of things hoped for, the proof of things not seen. God is ready and waiting for his sons and daughters to move in faith as he paints his story that he himself has placed deep in our hearts. Maybe it's an idea. Maybe it's a dream. God is waiting for you to speak that out. You know, Mark says this in his book. He says, God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. Then he adds this. A lot of you have heard that before. But he says, if it's in God's will and for God's glory, it qualifies for God's favor. The bigger the dream of faith, the more God will show up and his favor will be seen. He's painting in your life right now 
by what you dream, believe for, and more importantly, what story that you tell. What, what, do you, what story are you going to tell today? One of the principles I, I talked about earlier is that it's never too late. It's never too late to flip the script. You might be wondering, well, it's just, you know, there's too much uh, pastor uh, has happened in my life, and too much has gone on, and I'm telling you that there's no, nowhere else to go, not, nothing else to do. Don't tell that story. Don't go there. Did you know that God took Israel out of Egypt in one day? One day. You've seen the movie with Charlton Heston, I'm telling you. No, the scripture says they left in one day. It was one day God brought deliverance to Israel out of Egypt, but why and why and why did we ask the question many times? Did it take 40 years to get Egypt out of Israel? One day out, 40 years to really be gone and really be out. Did you know that journey was only supposed to take 11 days? 11 days from where, once they left Goshen all the way to the promised land, 11 days. But 40 years, there was wandering. Why is that? Because they were not looking at the past in the right way. When dealing with the past, if we remember wrongly or tell the wrong story, it can debilitate us from the new that God has for us. When we finally get to a place where we believe in our heart that he's for us, has a plan for us, then it's never too late, say it's never too late, to turn a new chapter in the story that he's writing in your life. If you want to start winning the day, or if you want to start winning this day, start revising how you talk about yesterday. Yeah, yesterday is history, but it's history. History is something that can be remembered. History is something that's there. And I'm telling you that many times when we look at history, we look at the things, and I'm not talking about historical in the context of the global, global history, but the history of our lives. Many times we look at it and we tend to focus negatively on the things that made an impact. Well, I'm here to tell you that for every negative thing is, if you really look and you're open to what God is saying, you will see his faithfulness and the evidence of his goodness in your life. Right. We sang it this morning. If we really contemplate those things, then we remember the things that he's done in our lives, that his faithfulness, his grace, his mercy uh, come to our rescue in time of need. If we want to start winning the day, we need to start revising how we talk about yesterday. After 40 years of wandering, the people of God finally begin to understand we cannot go back there. God has a plan. God has a purpose. After all the miracles, all the things that God had done, they began to understand that there was a destiny in their lives, that there was something that God is wanting them to step into and out of, God, that there was something that God wanting them to step into, a blessing and a promise that needed to be fulfilled, that there was a, a, a conquest, not of just the enemies that were in that land, but a conquest of their hearts where they gave it all to God. And after 40 years and a whole generation, they begin to understand that that day that they decided this is the day that we're going to go over, really it was God who was saying, yes, this is the time. And what, what God tells Joshua is that, guess what, Joshua? It's the day is today. And I have changed all the reproaches, all the things that Israel has done wrong. Those things are gone. Those things have been abolished. Those things are not just only remember the things that I have brought you through, the miracles that I have given you, the things that I have done to make this possible. Remember those things, but all the reproaches. You can go read it in Joshua. They're gone. They don't exist. 
Does it remind us of what Jesus did for us that on the cross that he died for all those things that he put us in a day? Today is the day of salvation. I already mentioned it, that he says your past, all those things through my blood when you accept me, when you follow me, when you live uh, for me, this is what happens. Those reproaches, those things of the past that didn't go right, those things of the past where you missed the mark, they're all gone. And the things that are there are that I placed you in this earth. I placed you in this day for such a time as this. Hear my voice. That's what he says. So, so awesome that we get to understand that there's a promise that we're to enter into and we've been set free just like they were set free in that one day. We've been set free in one moment. And by grace and by nothing that we've done of ourselves, we accept that, that true gift of, of, of what Jesus did and set us on a path and set us on a higher way that we can look to him for all that we need. You see, at one time, Abraham thought he was too old. Till he changed his story. I, I, if you go read the, the scripture and the narrative, he had all kinds of excuses. Too old, my wife's too old, there's no way it's going to happen. You know, I don't know anybody. You know, what if they're mean to me? He changed his story. Jeremiah thought he was too young. Till he changed the story. Moses thought that he was unqualified. Till he changed the story. Joseph thought that he was overqualified. <laughs> Got to get some balance in there. <laughs> Till he changed the story. Gideon had an in inferiority complex. overcompensated. Jonah had a superiority complex. I ain't going there. Have you seen those people? Peter made too many mistakes. Changed the story. Paul had a thorn in the flesh. Boy, can we relate to that. What story are we telling ourselves about ourselves? None of this mattered to any of those people. What mattered was whose they were and that they began to flip the script or tell a different story with their mouths and their actions. What matters for us is who Christ is in us and responding to him each and every single day and that we start living our life and that we start telling the stories of the greatness of God in our life. Think for in this moment right now that we're in. Think of how good God has been to you. I see little children here, and we saw them up here, but I see other little children. Is that not the goodness of God? I see people here who have uh, overcome and who have stepped through things like a chronic illness and chronic disease and cancer, and God has set them free and healed them. Is that not the goodness of God? I see people here who ha were, were, uh, have been homeless in the past and don't have the financial uh, you know, uh, stability, but I see that God has placed them in a place and given them and blessed them and just put them and in, 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 in stood them in a firm place. Is that not the goodness of God? I see people here in this room that are addicted to something and God has set them free from that addiction. Is that not the goodness of God? It's time that we begin to tell the story of what he has done. 
I'm telling you, this will just put you in a different, whole different place. Change your story, you change your life. Change your mind, you change your story. One last principle I want to I wanna talk to you about. It's called the Benjamite Principle, and that's not in the book. It's just something that, uh, that God uh, gave me, that term. Because it's more than just about us. It's never too late. The Benjamite Principle. It's more than just about us. Scripture says in 1 Chronicles 12, too, it says, they, being the Benjamites, tribe of Benjamin, were equipped with bows using both the right hand and the left to sling stones and shoot arrows with the bow. They were Saul's kinsmen from Benjamin. The principle from here is that every move that we make, every risk that we walk out or every risk we take makes, an unlikely, makes us an unlikely hero to someone else's dream and story. You see, when we tell a story about ourselves to ourselves and to others that aligns with what he says and who he says we are, it has an impact. It has a, an inspiration impact. It, has a, it matters a lot. To others. You see the scripture here talks about this tribe who was able to, uh, they learned uh, how, to, how to fight with both left and, uh, excuse me, right, see I can't do that, right and left hand. They were ambidextrous. Is that right? Ambidextrous. Ambidextrous. They could do it with either, they could sling, they could sling, they could throw, they could throw, they could fight with the, they could do it all with both left and right hands. How were they inspired to do that? Where did that come from? How, were, how was God able to take them from uh, one-handed to two-handed? Where, where is that? This is a, an interesting thing in Scripture. It's interesting because in Judges chapter 3 and verse 15, there was a Benjamite by the name of Ehud. Anybody heard of Ehud? Just Pete. Pete has heard of Ehud. There were many heroes that were Benjamites, but Ehud was one who inspired a greater discipline for using both hands. In fact, the scripture says this, but when the sons of Israel cried out to the Lord... When they cried out to the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer for them, Ehud, the son of Gera, the Benjamite. And it says this, a left-handed man. Did you know that all scripture is given by inspiration of the Spirit and is profitable for what? Reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. This scripture here says a left-handed man. Why was that included in the scripture? Why was it included in the narrative? Maybe because he was already practicing ambidextria, whatever that was. Maybe, just maybe the scripture puts it in there because it was an inspiration to the Benjamite, Benjamites. I mean, it's like how in the world did, were they able to like train? Who inspired them to train? I'm here to tell you that it was him who inspired a tribe who was tasked to protect, tasked to conquest for God. You know, I've had shoulder surgery before in my life, and I'm telling you, it is not any fun, especially when it's on your, your dominant arm or shoulder, you're, you're laid up for weeks. Travis is walking through that right now, one of our drummers. And when it's his dominant arm, did you know that? And did you know that he was playing drums but right before surgery in a sling with one hand? And that's not even his good hand. Did you realize that? He's a modern day Ehud. 
I don't know if he's listening right now, but I know he kind of injured his other arm. So, but when I see him, I say, "Hey, what's up, Ehud? Ehud's in the house." He's gonna be like, "What? <laughs> what an inspiration that is!" Ehud was was exactly that that their weakness became a strength. God's strength overcame their weakness through an inspiration called he had when he was telling a story that he delivered, when he delivered Israel, when they cried out, he, it says he was a left-handed man for a reason. You see, God's power is perfected in our weakness when we tell the story of God's power being so great in our weakness. It's an important piece of flipping the script or telling a different story. It has a cause and effect towards others. It it means something to others. This is more than just about us. In fact, in the New Testament, in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, it says, but he answered me, my grace is always more than enough for you. And my power finds its full expression through your weakness. So I will celebrate my weakness. For when I'm weak, I sense more deeply the mighty power of Christ living in me. Batterson in his book says this, Your risk and bravery is someone else's breakthrough. When you begin to tell the story and walk that out in your life, It's someone else's breakthrough. He says your hurt is someone else's healing. He says your disappointment is someone else's deliverance. When you feel like the story of your life has taken a wrong turn, understand that God is glorified when you begin to flip the script or tell the story, his story in your life. It means so much to the people that God has placed in your life. And even the ones that you haven't even met yet, that God will bring across your path. Vance, could you come on up? So I want to give you uh, just a few words here to take with you this morning. So how do you flip the script? I'm here to tell you it's not, this is not not psychology 101 in a 12-step program, okay? In this case, six steps. This is the Word of God. This is the Word of God. This is you going to the Word of God and going through these six things. Because His Word is final. His Word is everlasting. His Word is the authority on everything. Understand that. You don't leave here this morning with six steps and say, if I just do these six steps in my own power and in my own strength, that I will turn around my life. No, what I'm telling you is this. When you go to the Word of God, when you go to the Scripture, and you take these six steps and apply these, ask God, Father, what does this mean? How do I walk this out? Show me in your Word. He's going to show you. That faith and favor, that faith comes by hearing God's word or by hearing the anointed words of the anointed one. Jesus will speak to you. The spirit will speak to you as you open his word. So let's just quickly look at these as we close today. It's time for us to take action to win the day, okay? Remember correctly Bury the dead of yesterday. Bury the things yesterday that don't align with what he says about you or who you are. Focus on those things. You know, God has so many, so many great stories, so many awesome stories in the scripture, but also in life. And we remember the goodness of God, things begin to happen. Understand that he has named you with his name. He's got a unique name for you. And through how he has set you free, that name 
means so much in that freedom. He's going to share with you by his spirit what that means in your life and what your purpose is in walking this earth. Number three, believe by faith that he's given you favor to flip the script. He's already given you favor in changing your mind and changing your story. Believe by faith that when your mouth speaks, what comes from the declaration of your mouth aligns with his word. If you think about that, if you change your mind towards that, guess what? What comes out of your mouth will be that which he has already spoken and ordained over your life and for others. Remember that it's never too late for a new chapter in your story. Never too late. The future, if you look at it in a dim way, it may even look dim, but guess what? If you focus on winning the day, your life will begin to change. It's never too late. God has so much more for you. Doesn't matter what your age is. Doesn't matter if you think you're too old chronologically or if you think you're too young. Man, God has so much for you. He's got more to show you. He's got more for you. Believe that his power is made perfect in our weakness and it affects others. Just because you have those weak moments or just because you're not strong in certain areas doesn't mean that God can't use those when you tell the story of how great he is. In fact, often, often as the scripture says, it's in those weak moments or in those weaknesses that he gets to be glorified in our lives. Walk in the truth that today is the day God has taken action on your behalf. If you take nothing else today, take that and understand to win this day is really just getting up in the morning and said, God has already uh, walked out everything that I'm about to walk out and he's for me and not against me. And guess what? He has taken action and completed this day. Therefore, I will rejoice. Be thankful and grateful and celebrate in this day. Stand to your feet this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. So my challenge to you is this. Every time we do a piece of this, it'll be this. Understand that yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today. What are we doing with today? The kingdom of God is right here. Release it today in your life. Release it today for others. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much. God, for your word this morning. Holy Spirit, thank you for speaking to our hearts. We want to be inspired. It's not through the words of men. It's not through... the things that are the plans of men, but it's by your spirit. It's not by might, not by strength, but by your spirit. That all things that you have in store for us are to come to be. So God, we just set our eyes and fix our eyes upon you, the author and finisher or perfecter of our faith. Jesus, Jesus, we thank you for you've set the table, you've set the way. Spirit of God, speak in our lives that we with our mouths may tell your story. Tell your story that you're painting in our life, that you're telling about who you are in us. 
Father, I pray for every heart here, everyone who's listened online, whether it's now live or later on, God, that you would just give them the grace and the strength to flip the script today. They would change their mind, change their story, change their life. As you live, not only through us, but as you live as us in this world. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the work that you have done this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you need prayer this morning for anything, I'd be happy to pray with you this morning. Um, when we're dismissed here, just uh, come forward and I'll pray with you. I want to invite you back uh, next week. Part two of this is Kiss the Wave, and can't wait to share that with you. Um, invite someone to come with you. There's invite cards in a basket on the guest services booth. Take two or three or four or five of those. Take a handful. And they're really cool. They've been designed for you to be able to say, come sit with me in church. Come sit with me in service. So take some of those. They're in a basket on the guest services booth. Please do that. Uh, God bless you. We'll see you next week. You are dismissed this morning. If you need prayer, just come forward. I'll pray with you this morning.